Team Zoom Zoom is back on the tabletop. This time we're off to Middle Earth with the Lord of the Rings 5th edition from Free League Publishing. We're going to start with Session Zero, a little meet and greet and a setup for the Force Adventure. So let's start with our players and their characters starting with our new face, Darren. I have a face? <laughs> um, I'm always the last person to know. Hi everyone, um, I'm new face, but other people call me Darren. And I am going to be playing a dwarf called Morin Coldbeard. And uh, the reason he's called Coldbeard is because of his um, dwarven features. Um, he's five foot one, very stocky, uh, wears a ring mail. Um, but um, so he doesn't get spotted, he has um, a kind of lovely, like, brownish kind of cloak um he but what 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 stands out the most is his beard well, well all dwarves stand out most with their beards but he is uh his beard is is plaited in three places and he's got a mohawk and if that doesn't make him stand out he, um but what will is the fact that his the color of it is like kind of like gray blue and hence why people call him cold beard or why his family's called that so <laughs> no, just a, a, obviously, like um, I'm a very, very old dwarf. Um, I look like a grumpy old man, but I'm a dwarf. And uh, rumor has it that I'm a retired soldier, uh, but it can't be because all I do is travel around from place to place, uh, fixing pots and pans and anything that really needs going uh, doing. So there you go. <clears throat> all right, who's next? Good. I'll go. Right. Um, I'm Lee. You know me. Um, I'll be playing a hobby called. Agelfred Diggle, but his friends call him Gil. He has no friends. Um, he's the cousin of Dina Diggle, but Dina Diggle. He was disowned by his family because of his constant daydreaming, which led him to almost burn down his entire village. Having heard the stories of Bilbo Baggins, he wishes for adventure himself and isn't afraid to get into trouble to find it, though his bravery isn't easy to show itself. He is aged 40, which is like just after coming of age, which is 33. So he's he's old enough to know better. He's three foot six, which is tall-ish for a hobby. And um, that's about it. He's, he's a, he wants to be Bilbo Baggins, but he's not as brave as Bilbo Baggins. So Is basically. Bilbo brave? Uh, yeah, in the end. He's Bilbo Blaggins. That's the one. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Craig. Yeah, um, yeah, Craig, you know me, idiot. Um, so I'm playing as an uh, elf um, called Luke Fang. Um, translates, according to the internet, from Elvish as Dragonbeard. Nice. Um, so I'm going for a character who's somewhat pirate themed. Um, so, yeah, brief backstory. Um, I've got it written down here. Once a map maker, Luke Fang's ship was attacked at sea and destroyed. Um, he was washed up, injured, just near the Sarm Ford, which uh, shouldn't be far from where we're starting, I think, on the campaign. Um, he now lives in Bree with the men and women living there. To them, they know him as a sea pirate. Um, he's washed up with an eye missing. So he's got an eye patch. He's a, he's a wizened old man, obviously. Pirates, that's what people think. Um, so, yeah, so he regales the locals with tales of the sea and his adventures and stuff like that, but who knows how sort of true these adventures are because he may well be embellishing a little bit. Um, so he's a 400-year-old elf, which isn't super old, but it's old enough, as Lee said, to know better. He's He knows what he's doing more so than he wants to let on. He's six foot seven, slim, um, long white hair, and that's it. He's he's a mystery to the locals, and they sort of have made up their own mind on who he is, and he's leaning into that big time. Yeah, that's it. Great. Great stuff. Right. Do I get stuck in? Let's get stuck, get stuck in. in. Do this. Right. It has been raining hard the last few days over the lands of Eridor which has made the travel hard for merchants and travellers alike. That doesn't stop the town of Bree being just as busy as, as it has always been. For those of you who don't know, Bree is a, the chief village of the Breeland, 
Some call it a town, especially when compared to its lesser cousins, the hamlets of Archet, Staddle and Combe. The Great East Road cuts through the heart of Bree, and at the centre of the town stands the famous inn of the Prance and Pony, known locally as the Pony. It has stood for long, as anyone in Bree can recall, rising above the cobblestones of the East Road and looking out upon the green. It is always a welcome sight to both locals and weary travellers. Though its most common patrons are Bree locals, it sees its fair share of the Warren travellers moving between Dale, the Lonely Mountains and the Iron Hills in the east, and the Blue Mountains in the west, or the occasional hobbit from the Shire. The proprietor has claimed his grandfather once hosted an elf that was travelling west to the Great Sea. Noon has come to the small town, and the patrons of the Prance and Pony are tucking into some lunch and ale. The inn is not too busy at such a time, but there are small groups of in various parts of the large room. This includes a band of dwarven travellers who look like they've been sampling some of Barnabas's best and have raised a raucous song, much of the annoyance of the barkeeper. A hobbit enters and heads to the bar. The barkeeper looks down at the hobbit and asks, what can I do you for, Master Hobbit? That's me. Um, I'm looking for a dwarf. Well, as you can see, there's a few dwarves around here. A particular dwarf. Um, do you know any of their names? Or do I have to go ask? Because I'm a bit scared. Well, what's the name of the dwarf you're looking for? Uh, just let me check my notes. Um, I got a letter off Bilbo. Um, his name is Morin Coldbeard. No, I don't think I've heard of that one. But maybe the dwarves over there know they're a bit two sheets of the wind at the moment, so I tread carefully. Okay, I go over to them <laughs> confidently. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, you go over and you, there's three dwarves sitting at a table drinking and singing songs and they stop when... You walk over. Um, hello. Any of you Morin Colbeard? Who's asking? Uh, me. I'm Gil. I'm a hobbit. I was sent by Bilbo Baggins. Never heard of her. Uh, I was sent on behalf of Gandalf the Wizard. Big tall fella. Yeah, I heard of him. He did some good things up in, uh, up near Dale, I heard. The Lonely Island. Or the Lonely Mountain, sorry. We're a bit drunk at the moment. So what can we do you for? Um, I've got a letter. Um, I'm, t I'm to collect you and, and an elf. I don't suppose you've seen any elves. Collect me? Well, that's what Gandalf wants. And what's the what dwarf are you looking for? Morin Coldbeard. Hmm. Well, my name is Eri Ergi Broadbeam, and these are my two companions. So, unless you're going to sit down and drink and sing us a song, I don't know the dwarf you're looking for. I proceed to sing a song that we'll skip. <laughs> Imagine. <laughs> What song? Fun. They don't have to sing it, but what song are you going to sing? Um, hmm. When you walk through a storm. Mm. Hold your head. <laughs> <laughs> I, sing a, I, I sing a silly Hobbit song that I can't think of right now. Uh, the dwarves the dwarves love your song and they, they ask Big you to write it down so they can learn it themselves. <laughs> Big Liverpool fans. Yeah. <laughs> so they said, ah, I think I do know this Morin chap. He was drinking with us last night. I'd say if you look over in those pile of clothes over there, you might find something that you're looking for. <laughs> okay, so I go over to the clothes and I have a, a look-see. Uh, give us an investigation check. Is a 
its investigation is a roll leader d20 so just any uh, yeah just one d20 four it isn't very good <laughs> when you go over and you can see the coats are kind of rising and falling I, I pull In them like, away <laughs> you pull them away well, slowly like tentatively <laughs> Afraid. <laughs> so you pull them back slowly and it reveals a sleeping dwarf. A great big bushy beard. Well, a great big bushy <laughs> beard. So what are you going to do? You're going to wake him um, up? Or? Um, hmm. Yes. I tap tent. Hello? Tap, tap, tap. Excuse me, Mr. Dwarf. It's you, Darren. <laughs> I know, I'm being dramatic and building it up. <laughs> Usually they ask again. Okay, so it didn't work the first time, so I'll tug on his beard. Oi! <laughs> I open my eyes slowly. And I'm like... You know, for someone so short, I can't believe how loud and annoying you can be. Thank you. Right, so where is it then? Where's what? Well, usually when someone calls into someone's homes, they bring a present. Or, in this particular moment, maybe a nice pint of ale. I can get you a pint of ale. Luckily, Bilbo gave you some money as uh, for expenses. Oh, thanks, Bilbo. One beer for my uh, friend. Coming right oh, up. <laughs> thanks. Okay, I get the beer, and it's big because I'm small. I bring it over to... And it comes in points. Oh, it comes in points. <laughs> comes in points. <laughs> I bring it to Morin and go... There you go, sir. On you, the... you just give me a, just give me a second. I, I I can't function without my first pint, and I just quaff it back, spilling half of it, and I I wipe. And what you can see is like uh, underneath the I'm wearing, as I said, I was wearing a kind of brown cloak. It was it actually it's one of those weather cloaks that you can sleep in, but like as I'm like cl cleaning my beard, you can see I'm wearing a uh, ring mail underneath. Very very fancy. Uh, like um, the Warven brown uh, ring mail with little bits of gold in links in it that look like they there's some kind they could be some kind of symbol or something, but it's too hard to tell. And I'm like, yeah, that's great. Now I can deal with anyone, including someone that's very loud when they sing. So what what can I do for you? Who are you anyway? Uh, my name's Gil. I'm Gil Diggle. I was sent by Bilbo on behalf of Gandalf the Grey. Right, okay, and um, what's that got to do with me? Are you sure, um, it's, you sure it's me you're looking for? Are you Morin Coldbeard? Oh, last time I checked, yeah. Then you're the guy I'm looking for. Hey, okay. Um, I suppose I'll ask the next question that usually uh, goes with this, but uh, why are you looking for a guy like me? Do you need some pots and pans fixed? I... I, I personally don't know but uh gandalf perhaps does but he wants me to find a dwarf and an elf in this pub That's right all. well you're halfway there anyway you found one you can show him the letter if you want i show him the letter Ooh. and the letter reads my dearest bilbo i hear that you are looking for some adventurers to help with a certain task in the shire I see your time with Torrens company has rubbed off on you in the right way. I sent some fellows that I have met on my travels to help you out with what you need. They will be at the Prance and Pony in Bree in three days from now. They will find folk that, like yourself, needed a little nudge out the door. They are an elf and a dwarf. Their names are Lou 
Lug Fang and Morin Colbert. Until we meet again, old friend, Gandalf. So as you see, I need to find this Lu Fang fella as well. Yeah, well, it is me, although I've been called a lot of things, but I don't think I've ever been called fine. But anyway, right, so... Um, and I kind of start squinting round, and I'm like licking the alcohol from my beard. Take it. As I said, you can see I'm quite tech, old. When like. I stand up, I you can hear like loads of cracking in my back and probably my knees. <laughs> uh, What's what was your name again? It was Ill. G G Gil. 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 Sorry, sorry. My ears aren't what they used to be. Take um, a perception check. My eyes. You do the looking, and I'll just follow. Right. Is it a D? Is it a D twenty? Yeah, it's all D20s. Yeah. Okay. 16. And Craig, you take a stealth or deception check. Yeah. I'm trying to work out what's better taken. About the same. Okay. Darren, you can do it as well if you want. Oh, oh sweet. Um, I was going to say, can I help Gil? Um, yeah. I well, can help action. If that is, if that's, if that exists in this game. Oh, but you can do it as a group. Sweet. All right, cool. So I will... Yay, my first roll. Yeah. Yeah. I'll I'll do perception, isn't it? After your your saying yeah, perception. Perception, yeah. Yes. Yeah, um. Oh, these dice have let me down. That's a seven. And what did you get, Craig? Ten. So you squint around, and Gil kind of glad notices a kind of shape in the corner, in the dark corner, and there's a kind of gleam off a bit of armor so what are you gonna do hey hey uh morin uh, do you know who that the guy in the corner is um again my eyes are you know the way when you wake up in the morning everything just takes a while to open to, to work um i see a blur i'd be the morning pint you just i'll, I'll go i'll go have a look myself so uh, all right oh yeah i'll, I'll... <laughs> <laughs> Gil goes over and he it, it looks he looks brave, but he's pooing himself. And he goes up to the man and he's like, "Uh, hello." And that'd be you, Craig. Hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> um. Uh. Hi, are you? You wouldn't have to be Luke Fang by any chance. I, I could be. What? What? Why? Why? Um. Oh, I just had an idea. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you got your flute out. <laughs> <laughs> do, 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 do. The dwarves yeah, are in the corner right. playing a flute. <laughs> ah, <laughs> ah, the pesky dwarves. Um, um, I have a letter from. Gandalf the Grey, for you if you'd Gandalf? like to read it. The same. Uh, yes. Okay. I'll I'll read it. If somebody would you remind me exactly what it says, that would be brilliant. Deck. <laughs> it says, <laughs> <laughs> "My dearest Bilbo, I hear that you are looking for some adventurers to help you with certain tasks in the Shire. I see your time with Torrens Company has rubbed off on you in the right way." I have sent for some fellows that I have met on my travels to help you out with what you need. They will be at the Prance and Pony in Bree in three days from now. They are fine fellows that, like yourself, needed a little nudge out the door. They are an elf and a dwarf. Their names are Luke Fan and Morin Colbeard. Until we meet again, Gandalf! <laughs> ah, Gandalf. I remember Gandalf. Big tall man, white beard. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yes. I remember him. Um. Okay. Well, what what does he have in mind for us? I don't know what he wants. To be honest, um, I just know Bilbo told me, and I trust Bilbo. Bilbo trusts Gandalf. I just know I need to take you to Bilbo's house. If you okay. could, me, that would be great. Uh, Lee, okay. you roll persuasion. Persuasion. 
Plus remind, one, remind me what. Or that. deception. One or the other. Depends what you want to do. Um, going to be truthful or do you just want to. I want to be truthful because. <laughs> Good boy. So I just roll to so just roll the d20s. That that always yeah. the way, yeah. Okay. And then add your charisma. Bone. Charisma. So I rolled a twelve plus whatever my charisma is. Plus one. Yours plus is quite twelve thirteen. Yeah. So Lu Fang just kind of thinks about it for a minute and then agrees to go with you. Mm-hmm. I, I I trust if you trust Gandalf, I trust Gandalf. I trust him because Bilbo trusts him. I'm gonna wander up to them now. Yeah, that's okay. You do what you do, you. Yeah, I've just been waiting <laughs> back, but like I can see them chatting, and I, yeah. I wander over, and it's like, so Gil, is it is it the the elf you're looking for? Is it? It it is. It's it's Luke Fang, Luke Fang, Morin, Morin. Luke Fang. Oh, pleased to meet you. Yes, pleased to meet you too. Yes. He's very tall, isn't he? I mean, everyone's tall to me. I don't. <laughs> I can hear you. Oh, it was it was a compliment. Like usually, fifty oh. fifty for me, you know. <laughs> oh well, thank you then. Um, no worries. So I was told by Bilbo, uh, Mister. Mr. Morin, <laughs> um, that if you look outside the door, it's lashing it down, which is a famous hobbit saying, but the <laughs> rains have be coming down very heavy. Um, Bilbo has given me money um, so you can stable your cart for the night because um, it, we best proceed on foot. Oh, that's no worries. I was just kind of a bit worried about like leaving the hair, but that's okay. It'll be deadly. Mister De- Mister Belvo has you covered. Excellent. The barkeeper just shakes a big bag of money. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so he's gonna leave. Are we all? Are you? Are you two gentlemen ready to leave? Um, well, you know, I, they always say one more pint for good luck, so, you know. You just turn around and Barnabas already has three points lined up the table. <laughs> oh, Still shaking the bag of money and looking as the gleam into his face. <laughs> I wander up and gleefully take one down and, and, and take a sip and I was like, Manuel, they're nice and cold. Come on. Gil goes up and starts sipping it. Already knowing that <laughs> half of this is too much for him, buddy. I'll try. <laughs> I kind of see that. And I'm already half, because I'm a dwarf, I'm already half, my pints are already nearly half empty. And I grab his and say, I'll help you then. My new friend, Gil, I'll give you a help. And there you go. <laughs> Luke Fang walks up, takes the pint and starts looking as if he's going to sip it. And the second you both look away, just pours it into a nearby pot of plant. And then sets it down on the bar, gasping as if he's just swugged the whole thing down. Wow, you drank that fast. Well, you know what they say about elves. We we love our mead. Ah, I didn't know that at all. You learn something new every day. Yeah, I didn't know that like elves sounded like uh, when they're drinking sounded like if you were to pour mead on a on a pot of plant. But ah, uh, you learn a new thing every day. Yeah, no, it's it, it, it's famous. I'm surprised you've never heard it. It's that elven gulp. That's that's what it's <laughs> called. <laughs> Well, I'm only well, going snow now. I could drink this quicker. It's just that I want to, like, I'm being nice to my new friends, you know. And then no, no. we all just kind of sit awkwardly waiting for you to finish. Oh, I finished it real quick. <laughs> right, yeah, that's good. <laughs> this is nice and warm inside, so we need to wait. <laughs> so I think we're ready to leave. So yep. the group finally set out. Of Bree by the west gate and onto the east road and towards the Shire. The rain is still heavy, so you all have your hoods up and to shield yourselves from the elements. Not 
far down the road, you see a cart at the side of the road and two hooded figures coursing and booting one of the wheels. Give us uh, perception checks, the three of you. All right, perception. One dice roll. Five. Eighteen. Ooh. I got a nat 20. Plus four is Three. So, Fuck as you get closer, you two. notice that the <laughs> the two are very short, around the same height as Gil, so you know they're hobbits anyway. And as you walk up, you hear the one that's kicking the thing, he's coursing under his breath, and he turns around to see his... He says... Uh, I don't suppose you guys be able to give us a hand, would you? What do you think, guys? These are your people. Do they look trustworthy? I can't really see. It's dark, to be honest with you. Um, I, I, I walk up as a hobby. Because, you know, that's what I do. <laughs> How else <laughs> would go, you work? Uh, what, what seems to be the problem, fellas? As you can see... Our cart is stuck in the bloody mud. If you could give us a hand, we could uh, take us as far as the Brandywine Bridge. Sounds we're uh, uh, sorry, we're we're pipe weed merchants. I'm uh, Robert Marleyfoot, and this is my son Ziggy. <laughs> so <laughs> we were in Bree. Just we literally only left, but. This is an old cart, and the minute we start going, it just got bogged down. And I'm sure if you big that big shopping lad there, or the dwarf would be able to pull it out for us. I could do. No, okay. <laughs> I, I kind of wander up and I just uh, kind of uh, clasp uh, Kill on the shoulder and it's like, Kill, I'm liking you more and more every day. This could have been us if I brought my wagon. Um, yeah. I well, if if Gil. Says it's okay, I can give you a hand. So, fine by me. What do you think, Lutheran? Yeah, yeah, yeah let's, uh, let's give a hand many hands, make light work. Wow. Oh, yeah. Robert goes up and grabs him and his son, grab the horses. And who's going at the back of it? The big boys. Uh, yeah, I'll go at the back, I'm tallest, so I can probably see right over if it's a hobbit cart. And what are you oh, doing, Bill? I'll stand out the way. Keep an eye Supervise. out. Supervise. <laughs> <laughs> they right. said there was something wrong with that wheel, did they? No, it's just bogged down because of the the rain and the mud. It's just stuck. So if you's, you can try pushing or if you want Yeah, I'll, I'll push from the wheel to kind of like if it's it's probably got yeah. no grip. So if I can use my shoulder and push it. Yeah. Not, like, well, you still I'll try, I'll try give and lift us... up and you try and push forward. Yeah. I'll give us strength checks then. No worries. Oh, I'll shine a, I shine a light from the side. So strength. That's just the saving throw strength, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Just, cool. Well, yeah. So 11 plus 5 is 16. So I got oh, no, three. It saving throw, would it? Is eight. No, it would be uh, just normal. It would be like an attack, wouldn't it? Well, there's... there's um. Well, it would... Because um... you're literally just... Push them, so it'll be so just, just strength. Strength check. strength check, yeah. Just yeah, strength. so fourteen. So what? So what do you want? Deck a roll plus the eight of my strength. Is oh, that what you do? The, the plus eight on your strength. No, no eight. It's, it's, it's the, the strength is eight. Just roll. Just roll for strength. Okay. You have no eight. You have no uh, six. And what do you get, Darren? Uh, I got uh, eleven plus four plus three is fourteen. 14, eh? So 20 between us, and both of you are on the wheels, are you? One's at the back, one's on the wheel. I'm on the wheel, I know what's um, coming next. You start, <laughs> <laughs> so you start smacking your shoulders into it, trying to get it to move, and the horses are pulling like crazy. And Gil is just I'm clapping his hands. <laughs> Woo! You go, guys, you can do it. He's giving his moral support. And... Shall I sing another song? <laughs> yeah, go on. Yeah, sing a song. Uh, Not the same song. <laughs> I only don't want song. Sorry. Forget it. 
So it slowly but surely it starts kind of moving forward and then it just pops out of the mud and the horses kind of pull it back onto the onto the road and Robert and his son Ziggy cheer in the light and go up and start shaking your hands and patting you on the knees because they're small. <laughs> in three little beds <coughs> on your doorstep. <laughs> So they jump up. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. These are just pipe weed <laughs> merchants. So they jump up and say, come on, lads. In you go. Wagwan. <laughs> <laughs> is that another famous hobbit saying? It is. <laughs> they're from the south. They're from the islands. <laughs> <laughs> so they tell the you south, to jump south. in the back. And he said, ah, do you smoke pipe, pipe weed yourselves? I do. I, I'm very good at it. I so. can show you something. Tell you what. Robert, Robert rustles in behind him and grabs a bag of pipe weed and throws it to you. He says, have a blast of that. <laughs> <laughs> I will, Wagwan. It's your famous <laughs> saying, I know that. With brick, brother. <laughs> so then the, <laughs> you start off down the road. So halfway there, Ziggy turns around and goes, ah, so where are you heading, lads? Uh, we're going to the Shire to, to Bilbo Baggins's house. You may have heard of him. Everyone's like, heard of Bilbo. He's a bit of a bit of a crazy old man. He's not. He's a brilliant crazy old man. And why he's going to Bilbo's? I thought he was doing all the adventure and he's killing dragons and storing gold and stuff and down his hobble hole and I thought he was retired away from all that stuff. Yeah, but it doesn't mean that you can't have uh, good friends calling on him, you know? Ah, so he's doing well. Uh, yeah, you know. Well enough, like, you know, to be invited to a crazy man's house, you know? And if he's if he's crazy, then, oh, I must be uh, a big bag of it. Like this big bag of weed you just gave <laughs> <laughs> Luke Fan just puts puts his hand out to to Gil and takes the pipe and has a drag. <laughs> Give us a ah, oh my look, my stealth check there, Lou. <laughs> just Lou Fang. Luke Fang. One. One. <laughs> One. Ziggy, Ziggy's kind of looking and your kind of your hood when you're puffing away, your hood kind of falls a bit and reveals your pointy ears. He's like, Jesus Christ, it's an elf. And Robert kind of looks back and is like, well, I haven't seen an elf ever. He's like, where did you come from? I did a long story, but I came from the sea. The sea elf. <clears throat> Ah, he's a sea, a sea elf on a shelf. <laughs> <laughs> Famous sea elves. <laughs> oh, I've never met a sea elf. Jeez, today is the first. I've heard stories of he's all right, and you kind of, in the Shire, you see lights in the forests and stuff, but I've never seen an elf. And you're going with the two lads? Yeah, yeah. I was called upon for something, and as a fan of adventures myself then I thought I'll give it a go that's why you don't know Bilbo I don't know Bilbo I've never met Bilbo but I've known go to crazy friends. hobbit's house and you don't even know him you'd be surprised what I've got through in life go on give us a tale while we're on this road like the bandy the bandy wine bridge is ah, it's, it's another while away so tell us one of your adventures um <sighs> Well, I'll tell you how I lost my eye. How about that? Ah, like... got one eye. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not notice the patch? I knew you were an elf, but Jesus, you're really good at hiding the fact you've only got one eye. I just thought it was a yeah, fashion thing. I, I was knew a bloke of one eye once. Ah, his name was uh, Nicholas the Angry or something, or Fury or something. Fury for? Nicholas Fury for? Was he a hobbit? Ah, he was, yeah. And Ziggy's like, ah, he was like, he was the head of, uh, I think, some kind of secret hobbit police or something. But we won't get into that. 
So go on, tell us how oh. you lost your eye. Yeah, it was. Um, it's a, it's a patchy story. That <laughs> most, and I'm sure you'll figure <laughs> out why. <laughs> <laughs> <Good one. laughs> Sorry, couldn't help that one. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so I was at sea. Um, I used to be a map maker for for my people. Um, so, I was out at sea with my kin um, making maps. We came across a group of men who'd been shipwrecked. I uh, took them aboard and pff, I can honestly say I remember about three hours of that day. One was the men coming aboard and was greeting them, getting to know them. The next thing I remember was us going through the belongings just to check that they were who they said they are. We found some... I can't, I can't remember whether it was treasure or I just feel like whatever it was shouldn't have been on the ship. Um, and then the next thing I remember is fire, water, death, pain, and just a, like a burning needle through my skull. And then I'd say I lost a good bit of time before I woke up on the shores, not far from here, with one eye and no idea how I got there. So I wouldn't say it's a detailed story, but it's a story. I think you need another hit of this weed. <laughs> <laughs> I've finished it. Oh. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. The past the duchy, you know? <laughs> So you are talking, just chatting away, and then by real mid-afternoon, you spot the Bandywine Bridge. Also called the Bridge of Stone, Stone Bows, a marvel leaping across the river in three graceful arches. No hobbit can recall the days when it was built, but the Shire folk keep it in good repair, and as they are instructed to do so at the time of the Northern Kingdom. The bridge is wide and strong, allowing carts, ponies, wagons, to easy to easily cross and the lads pull up at the bridge and say like, well this is as far as we go <laughs> so uh, thanks for your help and for your story and you can keep the bag a pipe weed you have a, a, a awful lot of that left we're heading up to my uh, uh, true michael devlin and going a bit north end so we'll hopefully see us around again Thank you very much for the lift. Marley, yeah, much, brothers. much <laughs> my brother's Marley family. Much Marley. appreciated. Marley Foot. Marley Foot. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Don't want to be sued. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah nice much appreciated meet, for the lift. Yeah. Any time. So the two lads just trot off and he's are standing on the bridge. They were nice. Yeah. Yeah. So Gil is going to... Gil brings you... It's not so strange for the locals to see travellers along the road. So y'all pass easily through the East Farthing to the Shire and on towards Hobbinton and Bag End, where you... When you reach Hobbinton, Gil brings you to a small inn called the Ivy Bush, as Bilbo instructed you to come to Bag's end, uh, Bag End and to cover a darkness, not to draw anyone's suspicion. So you walk in to the little inn, as you probably remember from the Lord of the Rings film. Yeah, right, right. drink at the start. Mm -hmm. Lord of the what? <clears throat> Lord of the Rings. I think it's some football team, I don't know. So you walk in and what do you want to do? Just have a bit of time to kill. There's uh, some people sit. Oh, give us a perception check. We'll do this first. Please, no yeah. ones. Sixteen. <laughs> You're doing it as a group, so I'll average it. <laughs> so this is just We're off the 15. dice. Perception. Ah, uh, that's a dirty twenty. What do you get, Craig? Fifteen. Lee. Six, Sixteen. So you just walk in and you 
the barkeeper, she's behind the bar cleaning some, not point glasses, to be smaller with tankards. Yeah. There's some, uh, another white just kind of going around, bringing food to various hobbits sitting around, and they all kind of stop and look when a hobbit, a dwarf, and a kind of cloaked figure walk in, and they all kind of whisper in, in hushed tones to each other. So what do you want to do? Is it Rosie Cotton? <laughs> She's not born. <laughs> She's not born yet. <laughs> Gentlemen, you know where I'm from. This would be uh, the beginning of a very, very good story. So I'm gonna go. I, I'll get this round in. How about that? Oh, thank you very much. No worries. You, 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 you take a seat and see if you can get me a small table to sit on. Cause uh, yeah, and I'll be back in a minute. We we we, is the is it in busy? Not really. There's a there's a few people there. It's like it's say like evening time, so most of them are still kind of working in the fields and oh, you don't. so they're all kind of coming home. Mm. But there's a few there. There's a, a kind of large portly man sitting at the edge of the bar. There's a couple of women, well, female. What do you call female do- hobbits? Women, babes. Oh. Hobbitettes. Hobbitettes, I think. Hobbit. It's kind of it's Hobbit. Hobbits. There's a couple of hobbits. Hobbits and hobbits. <laughs> S- sitting at a table and they're kind of looking at you and they're tucking into this kind of, looks like a mushroomy stew. Yeah. Some scouse. And as I said, the innkeeper is just cleaning the glasses and she sees the dwarf coming up towards her. Hello, my dear lady. Um, can I interrupt you there, please? Hello, my lovely. What can I do for you? <laughs> well, can I um get uh, three per? And I got to see pints, but obviously they're not pints. They're little tiny. Would they be like cups? Little half pints, aren't they? Half pints. Well, can I get t- can I get five uh, <laughs> of them? And uh, okay, okay. That, that that stuff over there with the mushrooms. What's that? But those those la- those hobbit that's, hobbits are you? <laughs> that's a there. That's a a mushroom stew that has boffins crock mushrooms in it. Uh, one of the women from Underhill, she kind of collects them. They're really famous around here, but she won't tell anyone where they're from. So it's a very guarded secret. But it's delicious, especially for what are you? You're not a hobbit. Um, uh, yes, I'm, I, uh, well, to promise you won't freak out. I don't know, we see all so- sorts in here. We see underhills and we see toques and we see bagginses and, and once we've seen this big tall fella walking up the road. Ah, uh, well, well, I am not a hooded elf. And I smile as it's some kind of joke that only I get. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, the, and then I realise... Oh, the, the, the lads are too far away to hear it. So I just go, I'm, uh, well, you promise you won't tell anyone and keep it to yourself. My lips are sealed. I'm a dwarf. Ooh. I yes. Mr. Baggins talking about some dwarf business he had a couple of years ago, but no one ever believed him. The guy's a bit nuts. Like, Well, well, not everybody's nuts. You know, we do exist. You know, I'm sure... I'm sure he 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 knew the dwarf, but like, not every dwarf that comes into your fine establishment has a dealing with someone. I could be passing through. I could be here to fix your pans. You don't know. You fix pans. I do, I do, but I'm off the clock at the moment. But ah, sure, I would have given you these five tankards free well, if uh, if, uh, if you you mended this one for me. And she lifts up a pan, and there's a big hole in the bottom of it. Uh well and I I kind of go eh, I, I, right, I, I can quickly do this um if you would if you wouldn't mind leaving three of the pints here and dropping two pints over to the gentleman just over there uh, and I point at the lads and I, I and I do the kind of like put the point up the finger in the air saying I'll be one or two minutes and uh <laughs> from a little small pouch I take some fixing tools that I presume I should have if I'm proficient in it yeah. <laughs> Give us a. Let me just have a look. A, a sleight of hand check there. 
Uh, I think it would. Um, Mr. DM, would I have a few little, like, you know the way people can't t- yeah, well, you're, t- you're, get away from their work? You wouldn't like, be traveling without some of your goods, would you? Yeah, so, okay. Um, and you want me to do a what? A sleight of hand. Sleight of hand, okay, so. Magic. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> um, I'm just distracted your by the love points. I got a four total. A four? Is this your pen? I rolled a two. I'm making this easy for me, yeah. <laughs> So you kind of fumble around and you realize that ah, your tools are back in your on your cart. Um, like, oh, what, what's the problem, Mr. Dwarf? Um, Sorry, look, uh, what's your name? Can... Sorry, I never caught your name there. I didn't give it. I apologize. My name is Mr. Coldbeard. Ah, I am Priscilla Roper. This is my fine establishment called the, the I, ivy bush um pleased to meet you miss roper um yeah um unfortunately as i said i i'm kind of just passing through and i left my tools in my wagon ah that old story I'll tell know, you, what, but... you can have the drinks anyway but don't tell anyone Wait. i like i like the cut of your jib <laughs> i didn't know it was showing sorry um... <laughs> But I tell you what, I'm a, I'm a dwarf of honor, so like, um, well, depending on who you talk to. So I will be back and I'll fix them for you. And I'll do a few other odd jobs for you, no problem. I just don't know when. But I honestly did. I, I, I'm heart on, uh, sorry, hand, heart on hand, hand on heart. I forgot about it, forgotten. But I'll be back and, and I thank you, I appreciate it. This is probably a stupid question. Do dwarves have heart? I heard it was made of stone. Um, we're like kind that's, of our, that's our abs. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> and our chiseling good looks. Ah, you see what I did there, did you? Uh, and where do you want me to bring these points? Well, I was going to ask you to do it while I fixed your thing, but uh, since I can't, I'll, I'll bring them over. Don't you worry. Um, and she kind of looks over and she recognizes Gil and she's like, Ooh, you're hanging out with Gil Diggle, I see. Uh, yeah, yeah. What do you know about that guy? Well, rumour has it that he has a bit of a ting for Master Baggins. <laughs> if you know what I mean. It's a very deep admiration and nothing more. Well, well, you know what? Sorry, I, I didn't hear say... you, Gil. What did you say? <laughs> oh, ha- hello, Mrs. Roper. <laughs> and what are you doing here with these dwarf and man is it <laughs> question mark <laughs> <laughs> give us a, another stealth check there okay <laughs> i hate the way about secrets <laughs> because elves in a magical the hobbits haven't seen a fucking elf ever because they're oh, all like stealth. this little bubble so i yeah. haven't got a i haven't got a bonus on stealth have i oh yeah they have dex Dexterity plus one, so 14 with me plus one. Yeah, so your hood is, stays up. So yes. what do you want to tell her? I'm an elf. <laughs> <laughs> and she faints to the ground. <laughs> Mrs. Roper. <laughs> and everyone kind of rushes this. over and they're like, what, what's going on here then? Well, I, I couldn't exactly hide it. I, I, I couldn't help but laugh when, I, when my elfie is picked up on... On Morin's little joke about I'm not an elf in a hood. It was very funny. <laughs> a tree I knew you'd like are, it. I tried to kind of go under the radar. These are very fucking loud. <laughs> Everyone knows me. I can't go under the radar. Well, th- he's like six foot. What am I? Six foot seven? It could be a man. The people from the Bardlings are fucking huge as well. No. No secrets. So the big portly one comes over and goes, what's going on? What's wrong with Mrs. Roper? She fainted. She has a weak constitution. Gil, what are you up to? No, I get blamed for this. <laughs> You're always Shh. causing mischief, burning down houses and up there where Mr. Baggins is while I'm doing his garden. That was an accident. You know that was an accident. And give us a... a... What would it be? What would it be investigation? What's it? Give us a, a little bit. I haven't got a clue. Mm. 
Insight roll. That's the one. Who? Lee. Uh, just Gil. Plus two, so whatever I do, plus two. A one plus a three. Ugh. You don't recognise the portly bloke, but he picks Mrs. Roper up and he sits her on the one of the bar stools. He's like, Priscilla, what's wrong with you? <laughs> and she kind of comes to him and she's like, he's a, 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 a elf. And everyone kind of gasps. and <gasps> Now calm down, everyone. It's not that big of a deal. Mugfang just takes his hood down and just like really shyly like waves. Like, oh, yeah, it's me. I'm an elf. Apologies. It's your women sitting in the corner going, take a look at his ears. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. So everything kind of calms down after a few minutes of trying to get Mrs. Roper back up. And she kind of, her hands are shaking as she's given the, the cups of ale and you just go sit back down in the corner. You sip away and these two women sitting beside you and you can hear them kind of whispering and Priscilla is over kind of talking to them as well. And you hear one of them saying that, oh, I heard you found another dragon, I tell you. That's what I heard. He's looking for some new hobbit to drag off to the wilderness now. And then look at these strangers. And the other one goes, oh, I heard he's digging some t- tunnels under the hill. and The whole thing will collapse. So what does one to do? Obviously, she comes over with the, the stew for Morin as well. <laughs> I start eating the stew. I was like, oh, that's some, that's some good eating. I, I le- you know I what? let Mrs. Has... Boffin know the next time she comes here. You know, and I'm just doing this kind of, because I'm, I'm, I'm understanding something here, and I just want to put it out there. I was like, you know, where I'm from, these mushrooms have a an effect on people after a long period of time. They make you see things, you know. Give me a tasty, though. tasty persuasion check. Everyone on him. Uh, not no. just we're not Martin. taking the mushrooms, are we? No. Oh, same kind of water. A lot of drugs in this air. I rolled another not twenty. So they're kind of whispering to each other. Do you hear what he said? He said these mushrooms are magical and they see things. Maybe he is just a man. Maybe he just has a deformed ears. We'd never get an elf around here. And they're all kind of go smile wearily at Luke Fang. They're like, eh, maybe it's just from Bree. Those folks are a bit weird. So then Priscilla kind of brings you down more drink and she goes, don't worry. Sorry for all the hubbub. You can have these ones free as well, but the next ones you'll have to start paying. Oh, no, de- de- definitely. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. Like, you know, like we've we've just come from Bree, so, you know, um, good to stop in for a pint. And I kind of quickly look behind the table just to kind of infor- enforce what they're saying, you know. Yeah, so what does want to do now? Um, I don't know. What time? Um, how long have we? Is it, how long was? Well, he's there for a good hour, and he's are drinking, and you get chatting to the big lad, who it turns yeah, out was was Hamfast yeah. Gamji. Ah, Hamfast. Who is Samwise Gamgee's father? Gamji. And um, he's like. Tells you that he's been working for the Bagginses for 20 years now and he tends to the gardens and he knows, like, he hears all the rumors and stuff, but he doesn't believe them. Like, Bilbo always looked after him, and even when he was away in his adventures, he'd still tend to his garden and stuff. He said, Just okay. Mr. Bilbo likes his privacy, that's why I don't let anyone go up. So if uh, you uh, uh, look, Fan could ask him um, if he's got any idea why Bilbo be, could be get, um, summoning us. He just says no. Like he doesn't really. He keeps to himself. He's been kind of locked in his in Bag End for a while now. Since he came back, he's been 
a bit a bit stranger, more stranger than it used to be. Anyway. Is there anyone who else is in the pub? Uh, just just those two women, and Priscilla and Ham Fast. Do we need? Don't we need to talk to the women? Do we? Or do we? Well, we haven't spoke to we spoke to everyone else, haven't we? Mm. Well, what what so we, we, could, we could send the dwarf over with a bit of his cut of his jib hanging out and see if <laughs> get them to tell us anything. <laughs> They were they were the ones though that were spreading the rumors, right? Or were... they were just yeah. they're gossips. Yeah, so like uh, I kind of think of gossips fixed normally no stuff. Uh, what could we send? I'll go over if you want. Go woo them over with your elvish ears. With your weird ears. Okay, go set them. Go over. set them straight. So the two women are sitting there and they're they're out there finishing their bowls and they're just lying there. Puffing away in their pipes, and you see the human lug fang coming over towards them. <laughs> <laughs> um, he could. Um, okay, so what would you say? Um, so what? What? What brings some fine young ladies like yourselves to 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 an inn like this? They start giggling. They're like, "Ooh, ooh, ooh well, we live around here. What brings a big strapping man from Bree up here?" We were we've been we've been asked to come and see our friend Bildo. Bil Bildo? Bildo. <laughs> Bildo. <laughs> it's canon now. Bildo. Never heard of no Bildo. <laughs> we've been asked to come and see, um, Bildo. He he may have a job for us. And two of them just look at each other and they go quiet and they kinda of whisper to each other like I wouldn't be going up there with that Baggins. He's a he's a strange sort. What what do you know about him? Well, all we know is he disappeared for a long time and then came back and he had a big treasure trove of them. And then all these rumors about dragons and wizards and dwarves like your friend over there, and that's it. He keeps to himself mostly, but a lot lately, he's been going over towards the town. Te- uh, Michael Devlin. It's like a little part of the hub of Hobbiton. He's been kind of hanging around there lately. But well, other than that, we don't know anything. Okay. You enjoy. Oh yes, activities. we will have a glass of wine. Thank you. <laughs> I wasn't offering. <laughs> and we're not asking. <laughs> okay. Have a nice night. Goodbye. So the two women kind of scowl at him as he walks by. Oh, very rude men and Hobbit and Bree, aren't they? <laughs> very rude. Hanging yeah. around with that gig, di- Gil Diggle. It's always something got to do with him. Get blamed again. God. So I'll get back to the table and then what do we do then, guys? How did you chat with the ladies go? The um Gold digging idiots who don't trust you or Bilbo for some reason. They're just jealous. Jealous of Mr. Bilbo's adventures. Is it time to go? What time is it? Is it dark? Yeah. As you look out the window, you see it's it's very dark now. Ah, oh, we should so. go. We should go, fellas. You don't have to tell me twice. You have to go, fellas. <laughs> it all looks like you do. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> so you're walking out of the, the inn and Priscilla goes, ah, thanks for coming in and thanks for warning us about these mushrooms. I'll, I'll be sure to spread it around town. It's just to you take a break from them because you see weird stuff that you, you wouldn't normally like see, you know. Well, like your elf friend there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> go on, let's go. <laughs> so you just walk out, and he's after a quiet, quite a long walk under the, star- the stars that have come out blazing and bright after the afternoon of heavy rain, you're finally come to a round green door of Bag End. 
the home of the strange and famous Bilbo Baggins. Just as one is about to ring the bell, the door is pulled open and standing in front of the hall is none other than Master Baggins himself. He goes, ah, Gil, my boy, and you have your two friends with you. He goes, come on, quick, in, in you go. Gil legs go in. It inside, Gil runs inside. I, come on, um, guys. I wander in and I was like, uh, Master Bilbo, it's uh, good to see you again, but like, um, you probably won't remember me. You, you kind of, it was just in passing, but yeah. And I, I wander by and I get a little bit like as if I'm, I was going to say something, but I get embarrassed and I just walk in. I was like, oh, oh, good. Come on, come on, quick, quick, quick. Luke Fang, you too, big fella. <laughs> yeah, he steps in, looking around, trying to see, you know, and kind of distrustworthy because he's never met Bilbo. He's met Gandalf, but he's never met Bilbo. Um, so he's kind of looking round and trustworthy. Hits his head on the same lamppost that Gandalf did. Lamppost, same ceiling light that Gandalf does. Does exactly the same. Boo! Bilbo giggles himself, looks at kind of around outside the door, and then just closes it. And we we'll leave it there. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Yeah. That was fun. Yes. Good. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, and join us the next time when we will be starting the adventures of the Shire. As usual, follow us on all the social medias: Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Team Zoom Zoom One. I think it's on Twitter. So. That's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, Don't go to Moria. <laughs> what because the you know what the dwarves found. <laughs> the wolves. The wolves. <laughs> Don't <laughs> go to Moria. Cause it's deep underground. Deep on the ground. Deep on the ground. <laughs> deep on the ground. Uh, so deep.